All right. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Maria Olson, and this is Algebra 2, Lesson 2 for Unit 3. And I'm going to review real quick with you what we did in the last lesson, where we learned how to isolate x and solve a quadratic by doing that. So for example, this problem here, if I want to isolate x, I'm going to work backwards and try to get everything. There we go. All right, so I subtracted the 12 from both sides, divide by three, and I get two. And this was kind of the new thing, square root both sides, right, to get rid of the squared. And after you do that in your next line, you wanna make sure you have that plus minus with your answer. Anytime you square root both sides, that next line, you need that plus minus in there. And so that's, that's what we did. Um, we had just the x squared or a set of parentheses with an x in there and that was being squared. And we learned how to take the square root of both sides and isolate x. What we're gonna do in this lesson, it's a little bit different, we're not able to use that method. So if I look at this problem here, notice I have an x squared and an x right there. So it's a little bit different. So how would I isolate the x? Would I subtract 12x from both sides? Well, that doesn't really serve me well because now I have x on both sides of the equation. Yeah, so what do I do? So what we're actually gonna learn how to do is we're gonna learn how to factor today. Um, specifically, we're gonna learn how to use the greatest common factor so that we can eventually solve a problem like that. So this is not the method we're gonna use. We'll, we'll get into that in just a second. All right, so what is the greatest common factor? It is the largest number. And it's not just a number, too. There might be variables. And it's also, you could say, the largest variable as well that will divide into each term. So it has to be a factor of each term. Now, for example, with 6 and 8, what is the largest number that is a factor of 6 and 8? What is the largest number that divides into 6 and 8 evenly? And there's two methods that you can use. You can list all the factors. So, for example, I know 1 times 6 is 6, so 1 is a factor. I also know that 2 times 3 is 6, so there are all my factors of 6. 1 times 6, 2 times 3. What are the factors of eight? One and eight and two and four. When I list them out like that, I just can find the one that's in common and that is the largest. And two is in common for both of those. So my GCF greatest common factor is two. It is the largest number that is a factor of both of those. The other way that you can do this and this might seem familiar after doing the first lesson because you're gonna break the numbers up into their prime factors. So I'm gonna take six and eight and break them up into their prime factors. Six is two times three. Eight, you could do two times four and then break up four, two times two. And here, you're gonna look for the factors that they have in common and how many times. So for the first one here, I've got a two and I've got a matching two over there. Nothing else matches, so you're kind of looking for the pairs, the things that match. And whatever matches, that's part of your GCF. And you would multiply those together, but we just have the one pair, so it's just a two. So both, both methods, you can see that the greatest common factor is two. Let's go to number two over here. Let's break this up. This is five times x, so those are my factors of five x. For 30, now, if you did the prime factorization of 30, that would be 2 times 15, and 15 is 3 times 5. And then x squared is x times x. And again, let's look for the common factors. They both have a 5, so I'm going to highlight that. They both have an x, so I'm going to highlight that. So that's my GCF, and it didn't matter which x I picked there, by the way. So that is my... GCF, when I put those together, it's going to be the 5 times the x, so 5x. All right, let's do number 3. This time I have three different terms. I'm trying to find the greatest common factor for all three. So for 12, my prime factorization of that would be 2 times 6, and then 6 is 2 times 3, so 2 times 2 times 3. This is 
2 times 3 times x for 9, that would be 3 times 3 times x times x, and then also a y. So now we have another variable in there. Again, what do all three of them have in common? Greatest common factor. It has to be common in all of your terms, and then the largest. So the only thing that all of these have in common, because not all of them have a two, but they all have a three. So I'm going to highlight one of the threes there in that last one there. A couple of them have an x, one of them has a y, but it's not common to all of them. So actually in this problem, our GCF is just a three. That is the only thing that will divide into all three of those terms evenly. So here you can pause the video if you want and try number four and then watch to see how you did. All right, for number four, looks like for four and 10, the greatest common number, common factor for those would be two. And then for x squared and x squared, that's common to both. So that's going to be part of my GCF. And then for the y, there's only one in the first term and there's two in the second term. So the most that I can have is, a, is y to the first in my GCF there. And if you aren't sure, again, just break it down to all the prime factors like that. And again, highlight whatever is in common. They both have a two. They both have two x's and they both have a y.